What's up, Mopar fam? I hope everybody's having a blessed day. Today's video, we're gonna be installing that boom stick, the chop stick, the waka the locker, waka the locker. You know what that is? The camshaft, baby. So today is working on the front of this motor. We're gonna be jamming a camshaft in there. We're gonna get the camshaft installed. We're gonna get the timing set pretty much installed, the oil pump, the chain, the guides, the tensioner, lifters. And of course, the can. So before we get started, don't forget, give the video a thumbs up, comment down below, share the video, hit that subscribe button if you haven't subscribed yet, and let's get to work. All right, guys, so if you're just jumping into the video, this is our BGE 392. That came out of a Ram 2500, and we have already, in previous videos, installed the, the uh, factory forge crankshaft with coated racing bearings we've installed the drop-in pistons and rods fully forged from mmx we got all eight in there baby she's a v8 again ready to rock so today is working on the front of this motor we're going to be jamming a camshaft in there along with chain tensioner oil pump dilly dallies so on the table we got our lucas assembly lube we got our stock cam phaser that we need to put this guy in that is a phaser lock to be able to run this ginormous camshaft from frp which is the titan 2 boost specific cam that's what we're going with we got a brand new oil pump this is a brand new hellcat oil pump that's what we're going with we got new guide, new tensioner, new chain. This is old parts, so we're not even gonna talk about that. We just gotta get it cleaned up. VBT solenoid, brand new whole set of Hellcat factory Mopar lifters. Oh, and a new cam bolt. Gotta have that. Definitely gotta do this right. Although this ain't my first rodeo. We've done a few. Hats off, thumbs up to FRP. He's the man, it's all you need to know. Oh yeah, and we forgot this guy. Can't forget the timing sprocket for the crankshaft. Boom. So as you see, we got a bunch of parts on the table that's about to go in this motor. So that's the goal. Let's get it done so we can make the BGE 392 even more badass. Dun it, dun it, dun it, dun it. All right, guys. So we have our camshaft here. It is properly lubed up. Nice and, oh, look at that. Sticky, 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 sticky. With the Lucas assembly lube. One thing I want to note, guys, um, since I've been running the TSP Texas Speed camshafts, they come out of the box ready to roll pretty much ready to roll they are super clean uh no bs everyone i've ever gotten is awesome and they're not dirty there's there's nothing to have to really clean about them um it's always a good idea to just check and make sure um now back in the day my very first cam was a comp you know comp is you know is a good cam not gonna knock it uh but but when it came out of the package there was a note in there that said your camshaft's not ready to install and uh you need to clean your camshaft and i'm like okay well cool so i ripped the wrapper off of it right and there's metal everywhere there's metal there was metal shavings uh debris from the from the grinding and assembly process um pretty crappy if you ask me now i don't know if that's how all the clamp I don't know if that's how all the comp cams are still coming um, today, but I just kind of want to toot the horn on the TSP Texas Speed camshafts as out of the box, they're clean. And you don't get a note that says your cam's not ready to install, that you must clean it. So there's that. 
All right, so we still got some good old assembly lube on our hands. We're gonna lube up this bearing real quick, which is about the only ones we can really reach anyway, because the other ones you can't get to. So that's why just lube the cam as good as you can. And voila, in she goes. Tell you what, it's a lot easier to put a camshaft in when the motor is not in the vehicle. I do like that. Give it the old jiggle wiggle. Wiggle diggle. Jiggle wiggle. All right. Come on, baby. Take that camshaft. Can't say anything else on camera. <laughs> we got to give her the old hop tooie. She's a going. All right, guys, we got the camshaft installed, as you can see. So now we can move on to the next step. All right, next step is pretty simple. We're gonna install the crankshaft sprocket. Bada boom, bada boom. All right, now that we got our timing sprocket on, the crankshaft, uh, we are pretty much already got number one cylinder, two top dead center. Um, what you want is you want the pin on your camshaft pointing straight up at 12 o'clock. Normally your number one piston is gonna be all the way to the top of the block right here, top dead center. And then your sprocket has a timing dot on it right down here on the teeth. And roughly you'll see the keyway right here on the sprocket pretty much kind of follows cylinder one or the angle of the uh, the rod and pistons right here that's pretty much the basics of timing the Hemi um, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our uh, cam plate right here we're gonna go ahead screw it down then what I'm gonna do is right here you can kind of see where the camshaft rides against the back of the plate I'm going to put just a little bit of assembly lube right here where the cam rides. Just kind of rub that in. You don't have to do the whole thing. The cam is only riding about right there. And uh, we just don't want it to be dry when we put it on for the initial first start. So we're going to let that hang there. We're going to get our four screws. All right, we got our four screws. These are torque screws and it's a t30 a t30 torx is what fits the screws i'm gonna put just a drop of blue loctite on every one thread them in by hand loctite a little bit of loctite on each one There we go. And we're gonna hold the plate, run each one down a little bit at a time so it centers the plate up. Tighten them up. There we go. Those don't have to be super tight. You can torque them if you want. I prefer to do about six or seven righty tats 
works pretty good for me. All right, next up is gonna be our cam phaser. Next step does, so we can get our cam phaser installed, we gotta install our lockout kit. So to do that, we gotta use the uh, comp cam tool right here. Uh, basically, it's a special little gizmo that holds the spring tension on our phaser. So what we do is, you can see this little pin right here. You got your big hole, a little hole, and then a pin, okay? Your tool has like a little fork on it, as you can see. We're gonna slide that fork over the pin and push it down, like so. And then you're gonna thread this Allen head bolt down by hand until it touches the phaser and stops. And then you're gonna get your Allen head wrench tool or whatever you got, and you're gonna tighten this down one full turn, okay? So we're gonna do that real quick. And here we go. One whole turn, boom. Next step, we're gonna flip over our phaser. All right, so we have our T25 Torx right here. That's what fits these screws. Now, real quick note. Here's your tool. This bolt right here, all right? which is basically at six o'clock from where the pin notch is for your camshaft. You see the pin notch there is at 12 o'clock, it's at the top. The screw straight below it. Do not take it out. Loosen it one turn. Loosen it one turn only. If you take this out, your spring's gonna unwind and ask me how I know. That's why I use a hand tool. I've done this probably three or four times and I have had one time where I used my drill and it took it too far out and it was not fun getting the spring back in place where it needs to go. So again, we're going to start with this one. We're going to loosen this one and one turn only. And that's it. The rest of them. You can take them out. The rest of them bad boys, you can zip out with your zip zapper. Do want to note, the pin right here where your tool is needs to go right back in the same spot. As that is what that little lockout tool is holding is that little pin on the end of the bolt. That's what's keeping everything in place. So this screw needs to go back in that spot right there. You'll notice that the other three will look identical. And it don't matter where they go. As long as they go where they belong and you put the extra long one in the spot it came out of. So what we're gonna do now we're going to do the old slidey whitey. There you go. All right, so now we got our lock tool. This goes one way. You can see there's like a slit in it. And one side is not threaded until about halfway down. The other side is pretty much threaded and it looks like a smaller hole. You're going to put the bigger hole facing up right here in this spot. So if you look at your lock tool, your lock tools even with this hole right here, you go up, bam, goes right there in that location. Drop it in like so. The gap or the split in that tool should be facing the center of the phaser like that. Alrighty. Now we're gonna get our little Allen plug. We're gonna get some blue Loctite. We're gonna get our 532nds Allen socket. We're gonna put a drop of lock, blue Loctite on the threads right here. Then we're gonna thread it down into our lock tool, like so. And we're gonna tighten it up pretty dang tight. And tighten the bejesus out of it, because we need that lock to stay in place. We don't want it to do like that. She needs to be locked down tight. 
So I'm going to pick this thing up and I'm going to start cranking on it. And what this does is it, that plug basically starts to spread open that lock tool and basically just kind of clamps it down. It just kind of expands and that it just holds, holds itself in place like that. And you got to get this thing pretty tight um, before it starts to really do anything. And as you can see, I'm trying to pull it up and it's still... It's sliding up, which means we still got to keep cranking. All right, we got our locker installed. So now we're going to flip over the plate. We're going to put a small drop of blue Loctite on every bolt. Remember the long bolt with the pin made to it goes where the lock tool is located. We're going to drop that down start threading it in we're gonna leave it loose until we get all the other ones started now we're just gonna run these all down by hand Snug them up, hand tight. Like so. And then I'm going to get my old zip gun. And we're going to hit them a couple times. Now we can take our tool off, so we're going to loosen our lock tool up. There we go, and then we can just pull it out. And now we have a cam phaser ready for installation. So now we're ready to install our cam phaser. I'm going to put just a little bit of assembly lube right here like so where the phaser kind of rubs back and forth you can see it on the plate here probably won't hurt put a little bit around there too don't have to go crazy just a little bit does it other thing we need to do to get ready we got our brand new cam bolt you need to get a brand new cam bolt if you ever remove the cam you need a new bolt before you tore it down all right 90 foot pounds with blue loctite Put some on that joker. Make sure you have your cam locator, which is that little slot right there. Lined up with the pin. Okay. If you have your cam at 12 o'clock, your cam pins at 12 o'clock, then basically that would line up with the big dot right here on the cam phaser at 12 o'clock. Your cam pin should line up with this with the phaser slot if you have your pin and your dot at the top here all right now you can rock it back and forth a little bit and you can feel that the pin on the camshaft is in the phaser so we're going to thread in our bolt by hand just to hold our phaser on for a minute there we go 18 millimeter socket fits it pretty good we're gonna get our chain and drop our chain on get our guide mounted get our tensioner mounted and then we can take the slack out of this chain once we get it installed and then we're gonna torque that cam bolt down all right we got our new chain you'll notice that the chain has two markings up here where my hands at and then there's a mark there's one marking down here on the chain normally what you would do is you'd straddle those two marks with the dot or the timing mark on the cam phaser like so so you see the big dot and then right back here there's a little notch on the phaser where my fingers at 
and you want that in between those two markings and then down here on the sprocket for the crankshaft you want this marking to line up with the dot on the bottom of the sprocket and that would be considered in time and ready to install now again if your pistons at the top number one pistons at the top you got the cam pin 12 o'clock you got the cam phaser 12 o'clock time and dot down here at the bottom you're in time it doesn't matter where your chain is all right i know there's gonna be a ton of people argue argue with me over that it is what it is though but anywho we're gonna do it the right way which either way is right as long as you get everything lined up all right so we got our two marks up here straddling the dot on the cam phaser i'm going to line up the marking on the chain on the dot on this sprocket here now keep in mind it's not going to necessarily stay completely in place until you have all your stuff installed like so to keep your chain tight so just make sure that your chain is still lined up where it needs to be before you start putting everything together and you pull the grenade pin on your time and tensioner all right so we got our new guide we're going to get it installed bolt hole the bolts are going to thread into th uh, this one and this one so we're just going to push our chain over and make sure we're lined up on the dot down here still and we are so we're just going to use the guide we're going to push the chain over like so start our bolts in these will require a 10 millimeter socket or a wrench now we're going to get these tightened up properly torqued with about 16 rat-a-tats and now we're going to do our new timing tensioner and it's going to mount with this bolt hole and this bolt hole so at this point we're going to make sure that the bottom of our chain our marking is lined up with our dot we're going to slide this in push it over with our hand line up our tensioner to our bolt holes and then that is going to start taking the slack a little bit out of our chain and should more or less stay in place we're going to start our bolts and these are also a 10 millimeter socket or wrench just verify marks lined up with the dot we're still straddling the dot up here on the phaser so we are in time i'm going to tighten these bolts down there we go and we're going to pull the grenade pin boom baby all right we got a timing system on now ladies and gentlemen so again Number one pistons at the top, the big hole on the cam phasers, 12 o'clock. So is the timing dot on the cam phaser back here on my finger. We got our two marks on our chain, 12 o'clock. In between the timing mark on the phaser, our keyway, as you can see right here, is pointing in the same orientation of cylinder one. Our timing mark or timing dot on the bottom of the chain for the sprocket so now it's time to tighten this uh, cam bolt down to 90 foot pounds all right we are going to start torquing this down we got our torque wrench at 90 foot pounds so here we go and 
kind of anticipated that we were going to be spinning the whole system over, so we're going to put the crank bolt in. I'm going to hammer this thing down. I'll put my big breaker bar on there. And I'm going to straddle this wrench because I'm by myself, guys. So we're going to do what we can to torque this thing down by ourselves. All right, here we go. Ninety foot pounds is pretty tight. All right, I think that's her. Check her one more time. That's it. 90 foot pounds. All right, so the next thing is we can go ahead and install our Hellcat oil pump real quick. So we got the new Hellcat oil pump. I got the uh, bolts to mount it down to the block. Um, I don't know if this is necessary, guys, but what I did, um, just because out of the box, this oil pump is, is, is basically dry. Like, it's super dry. It didn't even seem like it had any lubrication in it at all so what i did is i just poured a little bit of oil down here where the oil pickup tube would be and then i put the timing gear in the oil pump and i just rotated it by hand a few times just to lube up the internals of the pump so it wouldn't be completely dry um, when we fire this thing up so with that said we're going to slide it over and get this thing mounted Kind of line up the uh, gears there. There we go. And there she is. Pretty simple. And these bolts, I believe, are... I want to say probably 12 or 13s. Probably 13s. Yep, looks like a 13. Let's snug them down. There we go. Oil pump fully installed. And what we're gonna do is the oil pump bolts are supposed to be 21 foot pounds. I'm sure we got them tight enough. They're probably over, but that little quarter inch impact gun is not super strong. So I just wanna make sure that we got it to at least 21 foot pounds. So we're just gonna check them real quick, see what we got. And nope, see, that's why I checked it. They were at about 15 foot pounds roughly. There we go. All right, so we got the oil pump torqued down. Now we got our oil pump torqued down. I'm just gonna make sure everything rotates like it's supposed to. It feels nice and free. And it does. And then we're just gonna line it back up to top dead center again. About right there. 
All right, next up is going to be installing the lifters. So we're going to get a set of lifters. We're going to put just a little bit of assembly lube all around the lifters like so. Even though we know we got that cam good and lubed. And then what I like to do is I'll put a little bit of lube in these bores. Go ahead and do them all. And then we'll just kind of give it the old finger nation, you know. There we go. And we're going to slide the lifters in, just like so. Boom, get another tray. Same thing, different day. Give them the old lube, slide them in. And again, these are the AKA Hellcat lifters, non MDS lifters, factory Mopar. Now we need, uh, I believe this is a eight millimeter socket. And that's a very small screw, so we're not gonna go ham on it. We're just gonna Give a little tap, and then we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. I'm not gonna bore you guys with that. Same exact thing, just the other side. All right, last but not least, we need to install our VVT solenoid. So we got it lubed up a little bit on the O-ring here. And we're gonna drop it in nice and slow. Boom, get our bolt, should be a 10 millimeter head. Tighten that one down. And there we go. We got a timing system all the way installed 